Uh, I'm Paul Slovic, and I'm very pleased to be here at the inauguration of this uh, uh, very exciting uh, risk exhibit. Uh, I'm a, a professor of psychology at the University of Oregon, and I'm also a president of a research institute called Decision Research in Eugene, Oregon. And uh, at the institute, we study how people make decisions uh, in their everyday lives and how policymakers make decisions. And many of these decisions uh, involve uh, risk because uh, risk is uh, part of, of life. Uh, we face uh, risk and make decisions about risk every day. And the, uh, the, uh, the quality of the decisions that we make about risk uh, influences the nature and quality uh, of our life. Uh, this exhibit will introduce people to the uh, very exciting uh, topic of risk. Uh, we take uh, decisions about risk uh, every day in our lives, so risk is very central to all of us. One can't learn everything about risk in a single exhibit, but this exhibit is sort of a crash course in, in risk and covers a, you know, quite a wide array of different kinds of risk. Uh, situations and will certainly be a great introduction to the topic and hopefully will stimulate uh, people of all ages to, uh, to learn more and, uh, about risk and to appreciate it in ways that they uh, hadn't done uh, before they saw this exhibit. I'm a researcher who studies uh, how people make decisions about risk, how they think about risk. And uh, it's been my pleasure to be an advisor to the uh, Fort Worth Museum of Science and History as this exhibit was uh, developed. And one of the aspects of this exhibit uh, is the fact that it's built around important themes having to do with risk. One of those themes is the fact that uh, we almost always take a risk in order to achieve some gain or benefit. We balance risk and benefit, and as this, uh, as this uh, uh, sign indicates uh, the weighing or balancing of risks is a very important aspect of risk taking. We'll see this theme uh, uh, played out over and over again in the exhibits uh, that, uh, the, uh, that we have here. This beam high above a city street is a great way to start the exhibit because it gives me a chance to, uh, to experience uh, risk as a feeling. This is an important way that we, that we uh, think about and relate to risk is how do we feel? Does something uh, scare us? Uh, do we feel safe? Uh, uh, are we uneasy about it? And so forth. And uh, I feel uh, OK uh, on this beam at the moment. I think if I was really you know, a few hundred feet above the ground, I would feel less comfortable. But uh, this certainly. Uh, Gives the uh, gives gives one a, an impression of risk taking and the fact that people who build high buildings have to uh, have to work in these conditions and they do it not for the love of risk taking but because uh, they are uh, doing a job they're they're benefiting themselves and society by taking these risks again this is the part of the balancing of risk and benefit that uh, this exhibit uh, helps us understand. Well, just like uh, the uh, people who walk the beams and the, uh, as they build tall buildings take risks, uh, a lot of other jobs uh, entail risks. And the, uh, in the exhibit here, we have uh, some displays that show some of the protective devices that, uh, that are used to uh, enable people to take risks while they're uh, providing the benefits that we need. For example, the, uh, the firefighter who has this protective gear is shown here, or the, uh, the uh, mountain climber who has a special, uh, special boots that uh, are needed to protect against the extreme uh, cold weather. Uh, so we not only uh, take risks, but we, we prepare for these risks, and we, we, uh, we use appropriate uh, clothing and other devices to, uh, to minimize uh, the riskiness of what we have to do. And a key element in risk is, is not only what we're going to uh, try to achieve, gains or losses, but what the probability is uh, that we're going to win or lose. And there are many ways to uh, think about uh, probability. Uh, this device uh, gives us uh, a good lesson in how, uh, even though we can't predict the path of a single ball falling down a, uh, uh, into this uh, array, 
we can uh, predict where most of them are going to land from a statistical standpoint. So we can uh, turn this over, watch the balls fall, and you see they form what's called a normal curve. Uh, there's a few out here in the extreme, but most of them are in the center of the curve. Uh, this is an example of the, the statistics of uh, large numbers and the way it relates to probability. Once we uh, get in a situation where, where we can see how the probabilities uh, change, we have to decide what probability of, of winning or losing uh, is good enough for us to take the risk. And uh, this exhibit will uh, give us an experience in making that decision about, you know, uh, what is an acceptable risk? Uh, sh when, when should we quit and back off of a risk? When should we keep going? Uh, we'll see how this works in a minute. Uh, I really like this exhibit. It has special meaning for me because it's based on an experiment that I did way back in 1964 at a county fair in Eugene, Oregon. And it's a very simple game, but it's, it has all the elements of, of risk. You see here there are, uh, there are eight switches, and seven of them are uh, safe switches, and one is a, a disaster switch. And if you pull a safe switch, you get a prize uh, and have to decide whether uh, to stop the game, take that prize, or go for a, a second prize by pulling a, a second switch. Of course, uh, the more switches you pull, the more likely it is that uh, you're going to hit disaster on the next uh, switch. The probability of disaster increases as you go along the game. Uh, so does the, uh, the prize that you'll win. So it's the conflict. It, it illustrates the conflict between taking another step, getting an even bigger prize, yet taking a higher risk in terms of a higher probability of losing on the next step. You can quit at any time and take your, your gains, or you can go on. But if you hit the disaster switch, you lose everything. Uh, this was a great hit at the county fair in Oregon in 1964, and I'm sure it will be a lot of fun for people to play in its uh, modern uh, computerized version uh, that we see today. The, uh, the actual theory of probability and the concept of probability itself uh, was developed, I think, in the 17th century to help people understand how to, how to gamble. And so here we have uh, a, uh, a machine that, uh, that tosses dice for us, and, and that's a very good way to understand probability. It was the way uh, probability theory originated. So we, we hit these uh, buttons, and the, uh, the dice are, are, uh, are tossed, and we can see uh, how easy it is or difficult it is to get different, uh, different combinations. Uh, very hard to, to get uh, a total of two out of two dice, uh, but much easier to get uh, three or four or five. And there's mathematical relationships which you can calculate, but you can also observe this uh, just experientially by, uh, by doing this and counting it up and seeing what happens. So this is really where probability theory uh, originated in this kind of a display. So it's nice to have it here in the exhibit. Now dice are good for illustrating uh, certain kinds of probability. You can get, you know, uh, a one in six chance is, is very uh, 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 easy to display because there are six possible faces on a die. But uh, how would you uh, uh, appreciate a one in a million chance or a one in a hundred thousand chance? Well, you have to have a different kind of, of, uh, of, uh, of device or display. And this tube, which has a million uh, uh, beads in it, I don't think I've ever seen a million beads in front of me like this, uh, can help illustrate that because uh, the different colors represent different uh, frequencies or prob relative frequencies or probabilities visually. And so while we can understand the concept of you know, one in a thousand, we, we see that here there are a thousand white beads out of a million. And we can actually you know, look for them here and think about how easy or hard it would be to draw one of those, those beads. Now, we often hear the term one in a million 
to denote a very low probability. And uh, indeed, we have one black bead here in a million beads. And uh, you can search for it. Uh, in fact, uh, I've seen it, so I believe that it's, it's there. Uh, and it, uh, it really gives you a feel for uh, the meaning of one in a million that uh, you couldn't otherwise get uh, just by thinking, just by seeing the number one in a million. Uh, that gives us uh, what we call an, you know, an experiential sense of this concept of probability. So this is a very, uh, very interesting uh, display to have. Okay, well, uh, one of the interesting things about risk is it's not always what it, what it appears to be. So most people would think that uh, lying on a bed of nails would really be uh, uh, not only painful, but uh, quite, uh, quite uh, devastating because these are real nails. On the other hand, the forces uh, uh, are distributed in such a way that actually this is as comfortable as many mattresses as, that I've slept on. Uh, so it's deceptive. It's not as risky as you would think it would be. What's important about this exhibit is it not only gives us the experience of taking risks ourselves, but it helps us to, uh, to learn how to think better about what risks we should or should not take. Uh, as this uh, uh, message indicates, uh, the more you know about risks that you face, uh, the better your decisions about them can be. And these next two exhibits, I think, uh, illustrate that. Uh, over here, we have a presentation about uh, advertising that involves risk and the way in which the, your perception of risk can be influenced by the way the risk is described to you uh, or not described to you. So uh, if you're selling insurance, you can, you can present the risk in a way that frightens people and leads them to be more likely to buy insurance. Uh, there's an ad here, uh, a cigarette ad, which is notable not for the way it presents risk, uh, but the way it, it disguises risk. So we have the Surgeon General's warning down here, which is uh, very small, but basically you have uh, a picture of, of an attractive uh, woman having a good time, which suggests that people who smoke Virginia Slims are attractive and healthy and having fun. And that's, that's a message that uh, disguises the risk aspect uh, of smoking cigarettes and is very, uh, very deceptive. Uh, over here, we have a, uh, a display that uh, describes the, uh, the pollution in, uh, uh, in uh, Azerbaijan, which is the result of not uh, doing uh, proper things to, to monitor environmental uh, pollution. And one of the things that, that risk assessment can do, it, it, can, it can show us the consequences of exposure to certain types of pollution. And by doing the kind of risk analysis that these folks at Texas A&M uh, have been doing, it can tell us how great the risks are of neglecting the environment and what the consequences are so that we don't uh, end up with uh, uh, situations like this, which really are environmental disasters.